You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 101, how to use and choose a dental curing light. This week on The Dental Guys, John and I discuss how to choose your next curing light and how to use your curing light properly. We talk about some techniques that will change your practice and may help reduce some of the post-operative problems you're having right now. Also, some very interesting things happened in John's office. A complete computer overall, and then we talk about a product of the week that's not even a dental product at all. Stay tuned to this one on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by The Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, The Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. Do you want to be able to understand, place, restore, and implement dental implants into your practice? Well, we've got the course for you, Restorative Driven Implants, taught by the Dental Guys. Restorative Driven Implants is coming to Des Moines, Iowa this fall 2019. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com right now to sign up for the next series. And hi, and welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm John, The Dental Guy. And I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And it's been, you know, the summer is, this will be listened to in about a month and a half or, you know, whatever it'll be, but the summer is finally winding down. And I, I, I'm Fall's so here, ready, man. so ready. We're getting into fall. And, you know, you want to talk about some of the, the things that happen in the fall. The, one of the drinks of the fall is certainly coffee. And you might think that that means the pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> Don't say that word. That's The negatory. PSL, dude. I'll just refer to it from here on as the PSL. <laughs> and, you know, if you say pumpkin spice latte too many times to Wes Mullins, I think he'll punch you in the face. I probably would. <laughs> and he, or, I mean, he just, actually, he's more passive aggressive. He just won't talk to you ever again. He won't answer your calls, won't answer your texts. He probably won't want to be your dentist <laughs> because Wes Mullins has a book. Tell us about the book that you've been digging on here the last uh, little while. Well, I am a coffee nerd, and um, I like to drink coffee, but also like to study a little bit about the history of coffee. I have several books on coffee and how it's shaped the world, really. Um, I mean, the Amazon is on fire for some part of that is because of coffee. Mm. Um, and um, But James Hoffman has a YouTube channel if you need to check it out on YouTube and he is was the 2007 World Barista Champion. Ooh. He is um, out of the United Kingdom. He has offices based in London, but he has this second edition. It's been out for some time, but I would highly recommend the book The World Atlas of Coffee, second mm. edition by James Hoffman. For those uh, of you who can't see Wes is holding it in his hand right yeah. now. I mean, he has it in his I mean, office, like he's, yeah, like he's listening, he's reading, he's pouring over this every day. No, no pun intended. I mean, there there is how tos in here. <clears throat> um, there's beautiful photography, and this is a okay. great coffee table, coffee table book, <laughs> right? coffee table but, book. This is you know, horrible. But we won't go on about coffee tonight. We've talked about things about coffee before. <laughs> John, but if you want to like have a, a good. Yeah, I highly recommend it. Check it out on Amazon. John, I think you purchased it tonight. I did. You told me about it. I was like, sold. I went and ordered it. It's on the way. Kara's going to love it. Yeah, sold. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be be a good day. John, what happens in your office when the IT guy shows up, the computer guy, (laughs) and says, we're going to replace every computer, every network card, Every interface in your office is going to change, and when you come back, it's all going to work. Do you believe uh, him? You know, it's hard to believe that. I mean, what I, just happened, John? What just happened? Because <laughs> you told me I'm like stressing. I know it was stressful when they told me what they were going to do. We've talked about 
computer IT, we talked about dental IT companies a while mm. ago in episode yeah. that titled Your Company's Computer Guy, which is one of my favorite episode titles of all time. And we talked about why using a dental IT company can can make sense in, in some ways. And uh, we use a company that just does dental. <clears throat> and when I wanted to upgrade all my stuff, because it's time, as you guys probably know, the end of this year, Windows 7 is no longer supported and no longer HIPAA compliant. You've probably been hearing about that. So if you have Windows 7 uh, PCs, you got to upgrade them. And, uh, you know, it was time for us. So um, they said, yeah, well, we'll just upgrade all of them at the same time, including your server. Now, for those of you who know anything about IT, you know that a job like that, I mean, we're talking about, in my case, 16 machines, all the networking equipment, routers, switches, Wi-Fi, everything, uh, to, to upgrade that, you know, how long would that take a typical human being? Probably like a week, you know? So that's what I'm thinking is I'm gonna be like out of the office for a week or something. And they said, no, no. I said, do you work Fridays? They said, well, not mostly not. Uh, occasionally I work about once a, once a month. And they said, well, if you could just give us one extra day, give us a Thursday off, and we'll have it ready to roll by Monday. Mm. And I was like, nah, that, I don't know. And they're like, no, we got this, no problem. So they rolled in here this last, thir- this last Wednesday night, and they worked from Thursday morning, basically, Thursday and Friday, and I promise you, they knocked the whole job out in two days. That's amazing. Two days, they had three guys working, and by fr- Friday night, I mean, it was done. Now, one guy stayed over the weekend just so that he could be here for Monday morning because they fly in from out of state. He could be here Monday morning and be here all Monday pretty much to troubleshoot stuff with my team, make sure they know how to log into stuff, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And, you know, much to my surprise, it just, it worked. Now, we had, we had to be honest, we did this once before a few years ago. I, I probably should have shouldn't have made that so dramatic because they did the same thing, but this is a lot more complicated because since that time, we've added digital x-rays, uh, mm-hmm. We've added Combeam CT. We've gotten a lot more complicated with photography. We've gotten a lot more complicated with uh, cloud-based storage. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's a whole other world. Our, our Wi-Fi, our networking, everything is more complicated, as you guys know. And it just really blew my mind at how smoothly it all went. And and with with a couple of very minor, minor little things. I mean, it was nothing. You know, I like mean, when you replace sixteen computers and yeah. a server. And a server. And a router. Yeah. And a firewall. It's just so many things week. can go wrong. But, you know, and, I, and I, I have a smaller office, and I've grown my office, and, to, you know, where we have 12 computers right. and a server. And uh, I would s- assume that in the future, as um, things get larger, that it'll get bigger. It's, and, and what I found, and if you go back and listen to that episode we talk about this i think what i found out is i've i grew out of the local guy right yes. the local yes. computer guy can do a lot of these things right today right. but well, but gets- listen to this man here's the difference on thursday so i'm not working mm. i start getting they gave me a list on Wednesday night. So he comes in and it's all orchestrated. He's like, I need logins to the following things. Right. He already knows what he needs. He knows. He's like, I need your, you know, Dropbox login. I need your, you know, care credit login. I need your mm-hmm. merchant services login. I need your scanners, Wi-Fi information. Um, I need your your Facebook counter up in the front that counts how many likes you have. That inter- I need the login for that. Schmerl. Yeah. <laughs> So, and I got maybe two calls, maybe three calls for things like we have, like we use Splashtop to log into our server remotely. And he did, and he hadn't, he didn't know that until he got in there. And he's like, "Hey, I need your Splashtop login." A few little things. What mm. do you want your Wi-Fi SSIDs to be? But I'm things that I didn't even think about. Things that your local IT guy would have no clue how to integrate sensors, how to integrate the CT. He's in there talking to all the companies, getting everything to talk to where we roll in there Monday morning and we can immediately go back to practicing dentistry. Yeah, I'm sure it was more expensive, no question, than if I yeah, would have used an 10, IT guy. 
Right. Right. And but then, but only if you don't count all the other stuff you have to do, and time the time value of money. I mean, who's going to uh, do that's, it? That's that's the kicker right there. The time value of money. Yeah. Right. Because who would have done it, all the other hookup? It would have been me or my well, office. Honestly, team. you and I, we could have done this install. Right. We're, yeah, we're geeky. Yeah. Right. We Except the, the server out. stuff's a little crazy. The server's but I weird. Done. The yeah. server's weird. I've been there yeah. and done that. That's tough. Right. But, like, dude, how much time is that worth? I mean, right. that, that the money and time factor here is big. Well, I'm glad that it went well because yeah. <clears throat> you know, if you want to know more about this and you can go back and listen to that episode to see who I use. I'm not going to like make a big deal about it right now, but private message us. Yeah, they need be to be happy. a sponsor. Be happy to give you some, yeah, exactly. They're not a sponsor yet, so maybe that'll entice them to become a sponsor and we'll mention them all yeah. the time. But no, seriously, if you want to know more about who I use, Wes uses the same people, um, let me know. Because I, I don't say that to like try to make a big deal about it, but hey, today's it, episode, it's John, worth it. It's worth it. Coming up here in just a little bit. Yeah. I'm super excited about it. Uh, hot we've been topic. talking. Hot topic. So we're going to get back to you right after our word from our sponsor and start that episode. Hey guys, it's Justin Goodbread here with Financially Simple. In this season of The Dental Guys, we're going to discuss how to increase the value of your practice. Recently, I've heard of practices selling between two to four times EBITDA. I've also heard of practices selling between 70 to 120% of trailing 12-month collections. Why is there such a big chasm between the sales prices of these various dental practices? What causes one practice to have more value than another? That's what we're going to discover together. Today, I want to introduce you to eight key areas of business. They are planning, leadership, sales and marketing, people and operations, as well as finance and legal. Stay tuned throughout this season of The Dental Guys. I'll be talking about how to increase the value of your business. If you have any questions about how to increase the value of your practice or how to potentially double your net worth every three to five years, reach out to us via financiallysimple.com. For more information about today's topic and other dental related topics, head over to financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. Until next time, make it a great day. So, John, the other day, uh, the old curing lights started to give way. Mm. And we've been talking about, you know, what I was going to buy. Yeah, um, a couple times. Um, I've been using 3M's Epilar lights. It's, you know, I love the, I've used them for years. And the Epilar light, um, tried and true light, um, they have a new light called the Deep Cure S. It's also highly rated. Uh, light, same ergonomics as the current Epilar that I've been using in my office for, man, seems like 10, 10 years, maybe a little less yeah. than 10 years. I think that over the years, we've had to replace the batteries in the Epilars, which they're pretty expensive because they're custom batteries. 3M doesn't use off the shelf, you know, batteries for these. So if the batteries go down, mm -hmm. that was one of the things that, um, that we noticed that, Occasionally, you're going to have to replace the batteries, and yeah. um, they stay charged. That's not a problem. It's just that the battery wear and tear over the years, probably you know all the wiping and and just battery maintenance and all that. So that being said, we sent off one both curing lights um, for and 3M was hey listen 3M was kind enough to let me utilize a deep cure. You know, for, you know, I think I had it for a couple weeks. Yeah. And um, actually got to try it out. So I got to try out a Deep Cure S. And that's their new cure, newest curing light. It's not new, but it's the newest one they have. Yep. And then also, at the same time, um, um, I got to put my hands on uh, the Ultradent uh, Velo light, the cordless version. Yep. And, um, and I was using that in conjunction with the the, the 3M light. Um, so about that time, I get a call from 3M, and they said, hey, one of your lights is actually working. The other one's not. Do you want to repair the old one? And I'm like, no, it's not repair. Just send the other one back. Yep. So I had to make a decision here. I had to I had to kind of dive in. There's, there's a total difference between the ergonomics of 
the tips and how you would handle curing in the mouth, okay? And yeah. I think that's where the first decision comes here is that when you're looking at tip design, you either have a 90-degree tip or you have a tip that's turned on an angle. Let's call it let's call it 50 to 60 degrees, okay? Yep. So that what you know, what that means is is how you put and all this the, in old, the all the old lights were that way. Almost all the exactly. old lights, you know, they had a they had an angled, you know, you had you had you go back to halogen and you had to have that rod, you know, that glass rod that was That's sort right. of <clears throat> orient the the photons in the right orientation so that it would kind of like a collimator almost. Right. Um, and a lot of even the new LED lights kind of use that same idea. Just until the last, you know, five, six years. Right. Until what this really allows the Velo was one of the first ones along with a couple others that, that went to that like 90 degree lens. Right. Also what happens whenever you, in a lot of these, you know, tips that are that, you know, 90 degree angle, that allows the mouth to be closed. So if you're doing, you know, things in the posterior you know, around second molars, occlusal composites, buckle class fives. Yep. You know, you're tacking cement, you know, in number two and 15, or just pediatric dentistry. Uh, the limited opening, okay, yeah, that's big. Um, situation, that, that plays a role in that smaller angle, right? The 90-degree angle, actually. It's a greater angle, actually, gives you the better access. So, yeah. Um, I, what I ended up doing is I had my old um, Epilar that the 3M sent back that didn't go down. What they said was fine, and I tested it, and it was fine. The output was good. Um, and I went ahead and bought the Ultradent. Okay, now we'll talk about a little bit why I chose that um, and why you might want to look at it too um, here in just a minute. So I was able to use the two side by side for 30 days because I could return the Ultra Dent mm -hmm. at the end of 30 if I didn't like it. Now I bought the Grand because I got there was a special deal at around the Hinman time and I was able to get a little bit of a discount. So look for those discounts because you can get a couple hundred bucks off. Yeah. So I got the Grand, which the Velo Grand has a bigger tip, mm -hmm. uh, big enough to make a difference, I feel like. And it also has a different button layout. You have two buttons to activate it, one on the top, one on the bottom which for ergonomics I think was nice. We yeah. all like that. So here I am in one room, okay? I'm using a 60-degree tip, okay, and a longer curing light, okay? So the epilars are long, and the handoff between an assistant's a little different, okay? And I've been using it for nine years. Yeah. In the other room, I'm using the ultradent light. Okay, so I got a true comparison of two different types. Yeah, back to of, back. Back to back. For 30 days. At the right at the end of 30 days, that other 3M light just went down, man. The light started flashing. It was bad. So it went down. So I had to make a decision immediately. Am I gonna buy the Velo or am I gonna take send it back? And I and I decided to buy another Velo Grand. Okay. And so it comes down to warranty and it comes down to the way it was built and constructed. The batteries put me over the edge. The 3M batteries were not improved for over the last gen model. The current gen model has the same battery canister, let's call it that, because it's a little canister at the end. You pop it out. Pretty expensive to replace mm -hmm. um, those batteries. They, they, you know, the thing about the Velo, John, you and I talked about it, is these batteries are like off the shelf type batteries, right? Yeah. Exactly. And they're rechargeable, nickel metal hydride batteries, and it just seems like they go forever. You've talked about it yourself, that you're just not having to replace these batteries, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and so um, another thing about the, the carrying light is just how it's built. It's built like a tank. It's got milled aluminum, sapphire lens, if I'm not mistaken. It's got three modes, okay? that leads us maybe into the next topic here is intensity, okay? Right. So it has a baseline intensity. Now, most new curing lights have this, okay? Newer style. So you have a baseline intensity that has longer duration cures. So you got your 5, 10, 15, and 20 second increments, okay? Then you have a second intensity that ramps up the power, mm -hmm. okay? And then that has a lower, a faster speed. And then you have what we call super burst mode, 
which is three seconds at, right. you know, the intensity is three times almost. It's almost mm-hmm. three times what the, um, or it's twice the intensity of the lowest uh, setting on, think, on the Ultradent. It's it's unbelievable how intense it is. Yep. Now, when the, the thing that, the, uh, this whole conversation doesn't, you know, I'm not telling you to go out and buy the Ultradent. We will make some suggestions of where to look and what to look at. But my rep told me, that most dentists, okay, use the super boast burst mode for curing posterior composites to cut down on procedure time. Yep. And I was like, hmm. <clears throat> Which when you told me that, I was, I, I want to say at first, my first reaction was like, what? But then I, I kind of went, okay, I get it. It shouldn't be surprising uh, when you think about what we talk about all the time on the show, a lack of understanding and a desire to cut time and or cost out of your day, which the second one is admirable. I mean, everybody wants to cut time and cost out of their day. That's well, understandable. Efficiency is... Well, we just talked about it's what it's all about. Show, it's time and money, right? Right, it right. That's a good thing. Hand. But but there's also this thing of you know if you if you can you know just because you have uh, you know a twelve cylinder motor doesn't mean you need to be flooring it all the time. There may be some consequences to that. Like um, red and line. that's you know, and, and so we started looking back because it started getting us thinking. Well, what is is that good or bad? You know, and, and I think that if you listen to our episode when we talked about bulk fill composite, which was something we've been using now for a couple of years, when I mean, you heard us early on in the show talk about how we just started using it and how we've now been using it for uh, over three and a half years uh, in, in both of our practices, or about three years, we've both been very happy with it. That's FillTech bulk fill is really what we've used most of the time. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons we use it is because depth is depth of cure, but if you if you read about or you, you see some studies on it, they talk about how the fact that you still have to cure it fully. I mean, we're talking about a five millimeter depth of cure, but still everybody that you talk to that knows anything uh, will say you need to go back or recommend to go back and cure, first of all, more than you think you need, you know, curing buccolingually, curing, you know, much more fully than you might expect. But forget about all that because that's all just suggestions, right? What does the research actually say? Right, yeah, everybody that sick. listens to the show knows that we try to not just go, oh, well, this is what we think, or this is what so and so says. Although that's important, but what does the research actually say? So, uh, if you want to check it out, uh, there's actually full text available uh, of this, which is uh, it was actually uh, published just in 2018. It went in the title of the study is "Influence of Light Energy Density, Composite Type." Composite thickness and post curing phase on the degree of conversion in bulk fill composites. Mm. It's a great study because it's very modern. It's it's basically measuring uh, t- using a velo curing light with two intensity modes, not the super burst, but the normal and the the, the medium intensity. And the, the regular was used for uh, 20 seconds, the, the higher intensity for eight seconds, which is what Ultradent recommends. Mm-hmm. And then they, they measured the energy density, uh, which is interesting. It's, I hadn't really, I started reading more about this and realized that this means that energy density is essentially the amount of light intensity uh, over a certain amount of area, or not so much light intensity, but it's, it's a light intensity applied during a certain amount of time divided by 1,000. So it's measured in joules per centimeter squared. I know we're getting the high weeds, but just stay with me here. What they are saying here is that the time, the time was more important at a lower density leading, leading to a high energy density versus lower time with a higher intensity. So if you look at the way that equation works out, the way that equation works out is that the variable that mattered more was the time in seconds than it was the intensity. So using a low intensity light for a longer time 
the results were it led to a higher degree of cure. A yeah, higher degree, degree of, of cure. conversion, right? Yeah. Degree because of conversion in the composite. Post curing happens, you know, over a period of hours. Right. Right? So 24 hours. Right. Post cure. So, so what's important from this is that, and this is going to apply to not just a bulk fill, but they yeah. were using bulk fill because really this should be the best possible situation, Wes. This should be <laughs> the best That's the reason possible. why bulk fill works. It's, it's more translucent. Right. right? It, it has the best chance of curing. Yeah. So if you look at how much difference that there was, that if you, if you were measuring this and you were looking at the difference, I mean, it was... It was a significant difference in the degree of, 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 of curing and how much polymerization we actually had just based upon this energy density measurement. So if you're using, if you're using, and, and basically what they say is the minimum has not been exactly recognized. So the, it's kind of, the thing is here, we want more. All we know is that we want more. And we know that there's a certain number that they want as a minimum, which is 55%, but we always want to see more. And when they were using a lower density, which means a lower intensity over longer time, it was converting more of this composite. So what's the bottom line here? The bottom line here is for your typical class two composite, that it is not, the goal is not to buy the light that has the highest intensity to try to save time because the light, right. the density here, the energy density is much more determined by the time and we would much rather, and if you look again, this is I know I know you probably you guys probably get sick of us saying it, but if you read the instructions, you know, like read the instructions on your composite and your bonding agents, they're gonna say ten seconds, they're gonna say twenty seconds, they're not gonna say three seconds. You know, they're so, gonna recommend using a traditional light with a thousand milliwatt or more cure uh, uh, intensity for a certain mm -hmm. amount of time, and we just recommend you know that you follow. The instructions, because we may be getting some problems here with our composites, Wes. Yeah, let's talk about that and how that kind of affected my decision making, right? Is I I I think there's an application for super burst mode, and we can talk a little bit about that. And we're talking about high intensity curing. There's an application for that. The application, however, is not to speed the uh, procedure up of a posterior adult uh, composite or an anterior adult composite. CRA does a great job, John, of mm -hmm. talking about key components of curing lights. And yep. if you want to check out uh, CRA, we like them. You know, that's Gordon Christensen's uh, clinician's research uh, clinicians so, report. So yeah. 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 Clinicians, clinicians report now. Yeah. Yeah. Clinicians report. It used to be something else, but now it's clinicians report. And if you look at even the most recent article that talking about curing lights, they do an update on these things all the time. March of 2019. If you go, you can go buy it for 20 bucks. Okay. 25 bucks or something and read this, but they talk about spot profile, right? Mm. And it's this cool looking, like three dimensional cone. Okay, of what your curing light looks like, um, as far it's very as like, cool. yeah, how gives the, you a visual. Yeah, it gives you a visual of how light is diffused through the composite, right? Right. Whether it's just like a little spike, right. or it's a wide, you know, a nice wide area, and then what? Right. Where is the intensity of that spike? Is it at the very top? Is it in the middle? Whatever. It's very cool. Right. So the one of the main reasons that I pay the extra two hundred bucks for the Velo Grand. Okay, is that it has a larger tip size. Okay, mm -hmm. so the actual lens is larger. Yep. And so the key is not, right, it's not being faster or more intensity, but it is a well defined, wide, broad spot. Okay, yep. now guess what? CRs, clinicians reports, number one, their gold standard light is it's the ultradent light. light. John, right. that's really one of the reasons why you bought it. Yep. And if you look at the two lights that I was considering here, the Fusion Grand, which is uh, by Dent Light, which yep. you actually own, John, yep. it has a really good spot profile. Mm -hmm. The also um, 
there's a couple other clinicians um, recommended choices. Yeah, the Ivoclar one, the blue phase is yeah, cool. Yeah, the blue phase is recommended. It's not, you know, not at, it's recommended. It's a recommended it's less light. intensity, but it has that yeah. cool feature that alerts you it's, if you're if you're moving yep. the light if it's misaligned. That's something nobody else has. That's kind of a cool feature, but lower Keep, intensity and yeah. it's much bigger. Has a much more challenging angle or not much more but a well, little bit more to challenging the 3m light that i was using yeah right? yeah it's not so a, it's a great light but it's but it's definitely still got a little bit more of that angle issue right and then um benco actually makes a one of their own branded lights uh which yeah. is a 90 degree Cheap tip too. they're recommended great great light right there good bargain too probably a bargain value right there yeah yeah um maga uh, maga cure right by strauss another recommended light and then, of course, the control is the Velo Grand now. That actually is because of all of the things that they talk about. Mm -hmm. The key thing is spot profile, wavelength, and irradiance. Okay, yep. The wavelength basically is ba how broad output the light gives. More peaks, right? Because if you have a narrow spectrum curing light, well, there could be some things that you might not cure. Yep. Okay? Okay. And you better hope they're dual cure because they will never cure, okay? Yeah. And then irradiance is measured basically three millimeters from the tip on the highest output setting. Values above 1,000 are preferred, okay? And so what I would say is, is that get the article, yeah. read it, but understand that it's not about speed and it's not right. about intensity, right? It's not the highest. You're not looking for... The highest horsepower light here. That's not the point. Right. You know, now we're going to talk about in just a second where the highest horsepower light might help you, right. but it's not in your typical everyday composite dentistry and bonding and things like that. What you want is you want uniformity and then you want these intangibles like durability, serviceability. Yeah. You want, uh, uh, you know, ergonomics. Mm -hmm. You want ease of use. And, you know, I we went to Velo in our office. 10 years ago when the Velo Corded came out. 10 uh, which years. I, 10 years we've used Velo Corded lights. Well, now we have cordless. We've started, so let me just back up. We bought four corded Velos. This was 10 years ago when they first came on the market. Mm. And I bought, uh, then when uh, we had a, uh, well, actually we had, when we had one old halogen, an old Optilux 501, this gold standard <laughs> for serious? so many years, man. Great light. <laughs> Hard to replace. Why would you replace it, right? Finally died. Okay, so we got a fusion. And yeah. uh, so I've had dent light fusion for nine years, and I've had Velo corded for 10 years. We've had a Velo cordless now for since it came out. And man, they're all great lights. They're all great lights. We've had zero failures. We've had zero problems with Velos ever. The only issue you ever had with fusion. Uh, we had one lens that, or one, sorry, one battery that went bad and it, and the battery lasted seven years and uh, the battery cost me like nothing. It was like $80 to replace. And then uh, the lens on that is replaceable. You just unscrew it, screw a new one on. That cost me like 50 bucks. So pretty much had a brand new light for a hundred and some dollars. That's been a total workhorse, zero problems. Velo, the lens I think is a little bit more stout, a little less scratch, scratch. Uh, it's more scratch resistant. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say this about the Velo. <clears throat> One of the things that we noticed, and you and I, John, we use the uh, Sican um, peroxide wipes, right? Yeah, yeah. The uh, well, you, I don't, I don't use wipes, but the same, sp the peroxide based spray. Yeah, right. It's the same stuff. Whatever. Yeah, you same can stuff. Put it, same stuff. You can eat it, right? Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> it's not an approved wipe for the Velo. Ask me how I know. <laughs> because it does, it does discolor that fine yeah, like looking have, aluminum. They have some really nice anodized aluminum. It'll take the anodization off of that. So, it will. It will. And we, I was like, we, our, ours now all pretty much looks silver. Yeah, that's what I called your office. I was like, y'all's uh, curing lights? Is all the color gone Yeah, now? it used to be turquoise. Now it's silver, but it hasn't <laughs> affected anything else. It's great on the plastics. It's just uh, yeah. it's just not Cavity. great on the uh, color of the, uh, of the aluminum, unfortunately. Well, I think here's the thing, and Gordon says it best. Regardless of the curing light you do, by okay proper clinical technique is needing to be used okay yeah. basically you need to review this every now and then because and and clinicians report does a good job because they talk listen what are we doing all that we're curing man we're yep. curing stuff it's huge and so maybe one of the most important things 
John, the, the, the statement from the dental guys is that burst mode should not be used for posterior bulk fill composites. Um, you should be using more longer duration. In fact, when we do class two proximal contacts, um, we recommend that you cure full 20 on the occlusal, and then when you take your matrix off, that you go buckle 10, lingual 10, and you call it a day. And, right. and I've heard, I don't know how many, how many clinicians have we been and heard, Jameson Spencer, I mean, Bertolotti, they yep. all say this, over-cure, 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 and over-cure. Yeah, when in <laughs> doubt, can, just cure for longer. Cure longer, especially if we're doing bulk fill. What's an extra 20 seconds? Get up and do a hygiene check, right? Exactly, exactly. So, and I think that you know you need to look at this. Now, let's get into, okay, so assuming, hmm. Wes, that you choose a great light, okay, what are some places where maybe having that burst mode or that high-intensity mode could be useful? Because we've just told you don't use it in your mission-critical you know, posterior composites. But here's a couple places that it is use, It is useful. And, and I have to give credit, the one I knew about, because I used it occasionally, is kids. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, kids, you don't have a deep proximal box, rarely, yeah. because they have short clinical crowns. So your most you're probably gonna be pushing your bulk fill to is maybe three millimeters, you know, typically, maybe four at the most. So you got a lot more leeway on your cure depth and I think you can get away with a lot more. If you have a kid who's, man, they're going crazy. They're, you got limited time. You got that isovac in there. You're fighting with them. Uh, having a very fast cure time sometimes can be beneficial as long as you're not pushing it. And I, I, what we do is we'll put it on burst mode to get that initial cure. And then once everything's kind of done and the kid's not freaking out anymore and I take the isovac out, then my assistant still goes back and cures yeah. it. Because, you know, once the kid knows everything's out of their mouth, Putting a curing light in there is not a big deal. So that's one place. And the other place, talk about that, Wes, because you kind of like one of the people from OrthoBrain, which mm. we talked about a few episodes ago, kind of gave you an idea of something that it seems so obvious, but yet we never had done in our Invisalign uh, practices. Shout out to D from OrthoBrain. Yep. Uh, Invisalign killer champion bracket extraordinaire assistant. <laughs> Um, but she came down and did some hands-on training with us. And so she rec <laughs> that was the day that the curing light went down and we were Love bracketing it. two people. It's perfect. So, <laughs> great. So anyway, she was like, y'all got a Velo? She was like, oh, put that on super burst mode and let's go to town. And so yeah. bracketing. For your attachments or your for, bracketing. Yeah, for your attachments, you're bracketing. You're curing, yeah, so you're this, this right. should be so obvious to me. I've been doing Invisalign for how long? I know, man. I mean, like, this and is And it eureka. never occurred to me that I could put it on burst mode and cure my attachments in three seconds. So stupid. Listen, do you know how much faster it makes it for my assistants? Oh, you know, man, I know. That's what I'm on. saying. Like, I remember we would sit there. Sometimes we'd get two curing lights because we were just that's trying to... That's what we did. Is we just trying to make it go lights. a little bit faster. So, like, yeah. dual lightsabers coming Don't into the across the, the streams. Yeah, exactly. Now it's it like... Was, Two velos, yeah. ching 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 ching, done. Exactly, ching 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 ching, done. <laughs> now you're done. Yeah, you almost feel like you're cheating now. It's cheap. Now. I actually, I, 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 my uh, hygienist, she does a lot of my Invisalign, um, putting the um, the buttons on, and the attachments, call them yeah. buttons, call them attachments, whatever you want to call them. And uh, she uh, gets done with this case, and I said, uh, "You finished." I was like, how did, you, how did you do that so fast? And she was like, D. D from OrthoBrain. She told me yeah. to put on Super Burst Mode. I'm like, duh. Like right. So obvious. All these attachments. I'm like, how are you finishing so fast? So things it, like that are are oh, very are very interesting, very useful where these high horsepower lights could be good. Yeah, and these are like one or two millimeters thick, right? Right. And that's not the point. The thickness is not the issue. It's that we don't need all this you know, total degree of conversion on this pro these products. So, right. listen, right. hey, I think this is a great thing, John. Um, yeah. To kind of kind of hopefully this helps and, you because I mean, so right. many times you know you talk we've talked about and really we we had we did not maybe do enough we did not give curing lights enough attention when we talked about um, preventing post op sensitivity 
in your composites, Wes. Yeah, we didn't really talk about that. If because you're using super burst it, mode, you got a problem. And it's really maybe a, an oversight on our part because we talked about curing before what we're doing with our bulk fill, but we didn't really understand how big of an issue maybe it was until the Ultradent reps telling us, hey, they're, se they're basically selling the light, saying, hey, guys, you can cure your composites in three seconds. Why would you wait 20? And, and we're like, And whoa, I don't whoa. think she was doing that. You know, she never said that. But. Well, but but I think that there. Might, I don't think she maybe is because I've never heard her say that because I know her. But I and I don't and I've never heard Alterdent say that either. No, like outright. But no. I, because Alterdent typically they're they're not they're pretty research based and what they talk yeah. about. But I wouldn't be surprised if some companies. Let me put it that way. If some companies are going to say, "Why would you cure for twenty seconds? We get a light that puts out four times the intensity. Just cure for three, and you're done." And we're just here to say that there might be some issue. Now, we don't know. What we don't know, Wes, is how much shrinkage and C factor and all that stuff really matters these days with our lower shrinkage composites, especially like one like Bulk Fill from 3M, which has got incredibly low shrinkage. We don't really know if the high intensity increases shrinkage issues. That's been controversial over the years. What we do know is it's more about this energy intensity or energy density. That's mm -hmm. the thing that we need to be talking about. We, we're not going to make this. We're not going to make a statement here. Oh, it's it's all about C factor or shrinkage. We're not really sure if that even matters anymore. I think right. uh, one of the, the JPD review last year said it didn't even matter anymore. Go back and check it out if you're not sure what I'm talking about. JPD review talked about how with the the the, the low shrinkage composites we have today that shrinkage, stress, and sensitivity may just not be an issue anymore, but definitely depth of cure, energy density. So anyway, we'll get off that topic. Let's talk about what would also be something to look at when you're choosing a light. And that is something that's near and dear to my heart because I love doing veneers as hard as they are sometimes. I love doing them. And that is a good tack tip. So for those of you who are not familiar with doing veneers, um, when you go to deliver your veneers, the, everybody's got a different way, right? So not everybody does it like this. But many people have been trained to place their veneers in, in, in where they're going to go, many times all of them at once, or, or maybe two or four, however you do it, and then to tack them in place. Of course, you're using a light-cured uh, cement, a light-cured uh, bonding cement, and you're going to put the light right on the veneer, and you're going to hit it for five seconds, but you only want to tack it in place like a tack weld right in the center. So you need a tip that does not cure the margins of the cement, but just cures the, the, tip, or the, the tack in the center so it holds it in place as you're setting your other veneers in place so it won't move. And so you can remove excess cement without it popping off. Mm -hmm. So the question is, who's got the best tack tip of these newer generation lights? John, and I think you got the answer. Well, I, I can tell you what I've used, and I can tell you what I haven't used. Velo has a light, a tack tip that is new that I haven't used, and Wes is going to be testing that. Yep. And it's magnetic, and it's very interesting. Um, the one that I've used, that I've used a ton of these tack tips over the years, different brands, not the Velo, um, but I've used, my, my Fusion is like my veneer tack light. It's the one that we always use whenever we're delivering veneers. It has a very cool little plastic tap tip, tack tip, very simple, pops right over the lens, has the perfect size, it's probably two millimeters in diameter, perfectly fits right in the center of the tooth, and also does a good job of holding the veneer against the tooth. Because if you're doing minimal prep veneers, thin veneers, you know that if you have a tack tip that's like a little point, you're gonna want, it's gonna wanna displace the veneer, so it has to have a little bit of diameter to it, so that it will actually hold the veneer on the tooth when you tack it. This one's perfect, and it prevents light from getting onto those margins. So I, after using a few of them, testing a few of them, that's one of the reasons we bought the Fusion, because we really like that tack tip, and uh, I love it. So check it out. But the Velo one is interesting, because it's, it's magnetic, so instead of having like to, to stick something on there, you just kind of adhere it. But here's my question, Wes, that we don't know the answer to. How good's the magnet? Because yeah. if the magnet is good, this is awesome, but the, the Ultradent literature says a strong magnet. 
Yeah, that's what I'm just sitting here looking at. I'm thinking, like, is this... Now, you know when I hear that, Wes, what I think about? I'm just going to tell you right now. I think about Jesse Pinkman. Oh, and I think, about, I think about the episode of Breaking Bad where oh, they my. use the magnet in the junkyard yes. to fry the electronics. And you know what he says. This is a, this is a kid-friendly show, so I'm not going to say, but he says, it's sci- that's science. And then he says something else. But... So if Alterdent has scienced their way through this and they have a good enough magnet that it actually keeps that tip from moving around when, cause dude, if it moves, I, I, that would be the worst day ever. If you're like trying to hold a little thin veneer and then I it starts imagine. slipping around. Dan Fisher. Yeah. He's uh, not, he's not a, he's usually pretty good. He's usually pr- got it together. So I don't know. The I think only, we just need I'm, to try I'm, it. I'm ordering one. It's 35 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's 35 bucks. It's cheap. I got to order one. I just haven't. I, but Wes is going to, Wes has got to get it right it out, now. Man. And he's going to try it out. And they have one probably for the, uh, the grand I'm guessing. And for the regular, cause I don't have the grand. Yeah. I'm not as grand as you. I have the old school regular. So that's all right, man. Uh, one day I'll step up I to am. the grand. The problem is the veil is so good. It never dies. Yeah, you, you're never going to buy another carry line. I know. Actually, it's funny because so my associate, his assistant, I love her, man. She's she's seriously, you know who you are. If you ever listen to this, she's great. And uh, she puts up with a lot from us dentists. You know, she really does. But <laughs> um, but she has one of the old corded velos. And both of her rooms have corded velos. Okay, oh, And man. both of my rooms, my assistants have, just because the way it worked years That's ago, before, right. I even, before I even had an associate. Before I even had an associate, we had switched two rooms to the cordless. So my assistants have cordless lights. This is horrible to say. You're, most people are probably going to get a hate mail over this. And his <laughs> assistants have corded lights. Just shows how much I disrespect my associate, right? And she has told, she's like, my Christmas, she told me a couple of years ago, she's like, you know what's on my Christmas list? A cordless. A cordless velo. And I was like, I'm not going to use her name, but I said, you know, I love you. But I said, until one of those corded lights fails, I cannot justify. What am I going to do? Throw it in the trash? That's Sell it the on thing, eBay? man. Is like I have never bought a curing light until it completely goes down. Yeah, especially a Velo. I mean, they, like I remember when they first came out and the rep came in and they had the cord and they did nunchucks with it, man. Oh, they yeah, were like, shoo, 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 check this out. These, it's amazing. They throw these cordless ones on the ground. You know, yeah. they stomp on them and they still work. So, yeah. So anyway, I think you all know what we like. We like these lights. We like the 90 degree tips. Yeah. They've worked great for us. We really, that was a big change for me. I think, again, I, if I was doing a little more research for um, lights, I think I'd check out uh, clinician's uh, report. Yeah. Look at those things and, you know, cure, cure more, cure often. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cure early and cure often. Right. And I don't know if Velo still sells the corded. I don't think they do. Yeah, they do. Do they? Yeah. Okay, yeah, they do. You can and buy it's it. it's probably yeah. a little cheaper. It's yeah, smaller. It's, it's actually smaller significantly because the cords. It's only but, like I mean, three hundred dollars cheaper. But this these days, dude, I, I wouldn't buy it. No. It's no. just the cordless is that? so nice. It I is mean, smaller. Maybe I'll sell it to one of you guys if you pick, if you send me a private message and you offer me a good deal. I'll maybe I'll sell you my corded ones and I'll buy. Dude, that people I'll buy might take you up on that, man. I'll buy a Christmas present for the uh, money for my that? my associate's assistant. Not really for him; it's for her. I mean, we all know the assistants uh, you matter get much the more. Too right? So. <laughs> exactly. So Wes, let's well, talk about let's talk about hey, the product. Some apple butter. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Let's talk about the product of the week because yeah. the product of the week usually is a dental product that you know, makes your dentistry better. But this week is something completely different. So hey, it makes my life better. I want to start, I want to introduce this and then I want to hear about your experience because my experience was different. When I first, so when we first got involved with, um, when we built our office, we built our office, we worked with one of the premier, you know, dental architects. So the guy that uh, that built our office, designed our office, Mike Unthank, was a big, he's a big dental architect, one of the biggest. And he recommended a company called T2 Consulting and also an IT firm called Ericsson. And they uh, set everything up for us, told us what they recommended. And they recommended this software called Venga, V-E-N-G-A. 
made by Apple Butter Software. Now, it used to be a different company, now it's Apple Butter. And they, and I was like, what is this, this little tiny software? I've never seen it before, I don't know what it is. And they said, you know those little lights that you see in some offices where they call you and they push a little button and it beeps or it like blinks? Like this is the electronic version of that. It's it's so, and that was 2009 we got Venga. We got 2009, Venga came along. And we, we you know what we, how did we at that point communicate? If we needed a check, a hygiene check or whatever? Hey! Hey, what's going on? Get over hey, here! Or it was I'm usually, ready. I'm usually ready. it was stalking. You know, I'm, the hygienist yes. would stand outside the room and, and first they would kind of pace to just so you'd see him out of peripheral. My and wife. then it would turn into like the laser where you're like, you're being, you are literally being like disemboweled by the laser. Dude, I got that you. today from Laura. Man. You know, she works on Mondays and she doesn't use the apple butter Venga. You oh. Know? Right? She too good She's for like, it? I'm only here for three hours, so I'm just going to come and get you. <laughs> right? So, I mean, I'm yeah. like in, a, in with a patient. I get the laser eyes. Even yeah. walking in on the other side of the assistant and just yep. staring you down. They all and do the is, same thing. And you guys all, I'm you guys, ready. You, you, I'm every ready. dentist knows what's going, what we're talking about right now. Every hygienist knows. I'm so, ready. So how do you solve the problem? So what Venga is, is it's a software that if you look at it, if just pull it up, stop what you're doing and go and pull it up and just check yeah. it out. And what it looks like is it looks like a little console, almost looks like little buttons. If you go to applebutter.com, that's the software company, and Venga is their main product. Mm -hmm. And you, there's, you're going to see a little YouTube video with a demo. We're not, they're not a sponsor. Maybe they'd like to be, but they're not a sponsor. We don't, we don't get paid a dollar to talk about this. And what you do is you set up little buttons, little virtual buttons, which is basically locations. Mm -hmm. And then when you want to call somebody, Venga, of course, in Spanish means to come here, and you push the location, the person, and then the location. And when you push the person's button and then the location's button, that person's button, which is a color, will light up over that location. So what you're saying is, I need Dr. Mullins, Dr. West in operatory three. So a little light turns on with Dr. West's color, because you can specialize the colors, and a little sound comes up, which you can customize. Mm -hmm. And a, this is the best part, a timer starts. A timer starts that tells how long since that person has summoned you to the room. So that means if you have four hygienists, if one of them is first in line, there's no cutsies. Right. There's no getting in the way. Prioritization and, is yeah. set. You can't you can't say that you were first if you were not first because there's a timer. Oh so yeah, trust then, me, they use that. <laughs> oh, dude, they love it. In fact, if they if you go to this person oh, that was in front of them, you're going to get <laughs> don't you do get kneecap, dude. I guarantee it. <laughs> so so you look at the timer and you know, first of all by your color at a glance, at a glance, um, if you have multiple doctors especially, you know who's being called, the 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 tone and the color. And then if you don't know which room you need to go to first, hygienists don't have to get up and tell you it's right there. Whoever's timer's been running the longest. That's one aspect. That's the aspect that is for us the most useful. That's probably the most useful. So Wes, so I've used this a long time. Wes was he he was getting he was changing over. You're changing over some stuff, mm -hmm. and you saw and you were like, "What are you guys doing for communication?" And I was like, "Check this software out. It's just kind of silly. It seems like a silly little software. Tell me, tell me, like, how has that changed your your office?" Oh, it's unreal, man. I mean, if you ask, if we had to get rid of it, they would they would say no way. I yeah. would say no way. You know, we were just using simple messenger, you know, yeah. and like Eaglesoft. instant messenger kind of thing. Yeah, just an instant messenger. Hey, I'm ready over here, you know, yeah. and that just disappears. That's one thing, right? Right, right. But most of the time in a smaller office like myself, you know, five operatories, you know, you're just right down the hallway and like, hey, I'm ready over there. Or the yep. assistant just keeps telling you, go, go, go. But what this does is that it just really prioritizes where you need to go, what you need to do. And you can get as specific as like putting little icons on there. It's easy to do. Like, hey, I need to check. Hey, I've got a question mark here. I need to answer this yeah. question. Anesthesia. I need anesthesia. Whatever. There's all kinds of little things, and we use those too. But And then there's the messaging, which is yes. another thing. So let's the, talk about that. Yeah, yeah the messaging ahead. is a whole other, whole other thing because – you know the buttons are the buttons to me are the, are the coolest part. It, it can get really deep. The messaging is amazing. 
Yeah. Because it lives until people jump off of it. It's right. It, it's you can it's send better. it to mobile numbers. Yeah. So, so let me tell you about that. So yeah, yeah. I'm using a, a Samsung Galaxy Watch, and and one of the things that it that it does is that they put my mobile number in there. And so not only do they ping the Vinga, right? And we just call it a ping it, you know, so they've selected where I need to go so that everyone kind of knows where Dr. Mullins needs to go next. They just send me a little message, a little text message. Say, I'm ready. Yeah, come I'm over ready. here, you and jerk. And it says who it's from, Jordan. Yeah. I'm ready in Jordan. I'm ready for anesthesia. Jordan, I just looked down at my watch and I'm like, she's ready for anesthesia. I mean, right. I could be... I could be out back talking on the phone, you know, right. like in the break room, snacking on some almonds. And wait a minute, Jordan's ready for a check. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And that right there, if you have a That's smart huge. watch, it's huge. Right. If you go out to lunch and, oh, you know, somebody, some, you're coming back, you know, and somebody doesn't know you're gone. Totally so they're works. Not, and, and they might, you know, they don't know. So they, but now they can just send you this message and say, hey, I'm ready or ask you a question or whatever, right from their operatory. They don't have to get their phone. They don't have to. It's and and then you can send messages to the whole group. That's so right. how we use this is when patients. I mean, think about it this. How how does your assistant find out that a patient is here from the front desk? Right. Well, we all know all the software has little ways you can change their status. Right. You can change their status mm -hmm. to here. But do people are people sitting there looking all mm. the time at that computer? No, they're not. So what Venga does is you can send to every workstation a message saying, you know, Dr. John's patient's here. And the, the assistants don't have to constantly be hanging out at the front asking, is my patient, is my patient, is my patient here? Because the message goes out and then they easily can be closed on any station that doesn't need that information. So your assistants have less chance of having to hang out in the front. Your hygienists don't have to hang out outside your room. This is just creating a much smoother workflow. You know what I couldn't we believe? Could, we, we couldn't live without it. Just like you, Wes, couldn't I, live without it. I couldn't believe, like in the beginning of this, I said, hey guys, we're going to try out Venga. They're like, what's this? And I showed them. And, and like, probably, I think it was a, yeah, it was. We were out for lunch and I talked about it. And I had everybody do the heads down, hands up. Who's for it? And it was split. Yeah. Because so it looks kind of, it seems kind of hokey. When you look at the does. software first, you're like, this looks kind of hokey. It hasn't changed ever since I started using it, dude. Ten years has Long been the same. Long story short, it's shifted way, way to the positive. And, yeah. and it only, it's a $1.99 a workstation. Yeah. It's crazy. And I, I just think it's a- $1.99 a workstation, right? Right. We need to not, we need to like maybe not have these people as a sponsor because they might raise the price. Yeah, don't the raise the problem. price. Hey, you can try it out cheap. for three if you go to their website. <laughs> tell them the dental guys sent you. Yeah, tell them that, that, that we sent you because I promise you, I promise you, I give you my guarantee at the dental guys, I think both agree, you will not, if you use this for a month, you will never go back. I promise, and no matter what size your practice is, it could be 30 people, it could be three people. I really it's like huge. it. Highly recommend it. Two thumbs up for Vinga. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it well, it's been nothing. an awesome. It's been an awesome episode, Wes. We've covered some really everyday, typical questions that people ask about their composites, their curing mm -hmm. lights. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about how to look for curing lights. We talked about Venga. It's just been awesome to just again get to connect with things that are real world. Um, there's some pretty exciting stuff coming up for us. I just want to let you know um, this next spring is going to be huge for the dental guys. There's going to be some things going on that we can't tell you all about yet, but we will be, and we're very excited about it. So keep connecting with us, like us, follow us, hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Definitely, please, please, please give us, if, you have, if you've been a longtime listener and you have not reviewed us on iTunes, podcasts, Apple Podcasts, come on. Get get on it right now. You should feel go, really bad right now. You should really feel horrible. You, you right are you now. really Just take, pull your car over? Yeah, it's right much more important than whatever you're doing right now. Go and yeah. give us a great review because that is the only way in some worlds that we get out there is if you put us up there on Apple Podcasts and we thank you for all the positive reviews you've given us because it's really contributed to our success. But continue to ask us for more of the great content that you want. If you let us know what we want, what you want more of. We can give that to you. We're excited 
for some things coming up, some great interviews we're going to be having just next week. We got a really special guest. Uh, we're going to be talking some high level stuff about airway. It's mm. going to be amazing. We've got uh, uh, some really cool stuff coming up later on this year. So we're yeah, just excited to be on this journey. Special promotion coming up next week. Stay tuned for that. A little promotion oh, man. Code. And then RDI is kicking money. back off again in the fall. RDI. It's full for the fall. It's already filling up for the spring. Just don't if you want to get PSLs. involved in RDI, it's it just go, go check it out, restoredriverandimplants.com. Mm. You know it's going to be good. You know it's going to be high level. Uh, we're going we're gonna to always give it to you straight. Wes, close us out. It. Yeah. So for Wes... Actually, for John and Wes, <laughs> we are really, I just want to say, we thank you so much for listening to us. And um, many of you have given us a lot of feedback, and we appreciate that. So thank you so much for listening. As we continue on, this has been Dental Guys Episode 101, and we are excited to bring you this episode. And thank you so much for the people that are sponsoring us and keeping us uh, going here. It helps us out because it gives us time to kind of come up with great new things and there's a lot to come there is a lot to come and we're excited about that so for john i'm wes and we are the dental guys <laughs>